only goal in my mind was to come back with a smile from okay. the exam hall and okay. that happened and uh, joining shankar's i could uh, actually cover it in a very systematic manner by dividing both all the four papers into two sections and uh, learning them is mod se jaate hain is mod se jaate hain hello everyone welcome to another episode of success stories with shankar's academy Today we have with us Ms. Niranjana M, who cleared this year's UPSC Civil Service Examination with an All India rank of 431. Niranjana is a student of Shankar Rice Academy, and we are very proud about her. So first and foremost, Niranjana, hearty congratulations for Thank your you great so much. success. Thank you. Thank you. So today, let's hear from her all her success stories and strategies. So my first question to every aspirant is. How did you know the result, and what was your first reaction when you saw your name on that holy PDF? So uh, we were almost uh, sure that the results will be out on Monday. Uh, so me and my sister was very anxious from the morning itself. We were looking at uh, the Telegram channel in which the results would be out, and the verified PDF would be available. So we were anxiously waiting for three, four hours, and finally it was out around one, one four p.m. And I immediately opened it and typed my name, and I found it. Uh, I, I did not tell it that at that point of time. I did not tell my parents, and uh, I looked at uh, if uh, any of my friends have cleared, and I saw many of their names. So I was very happy, and I told my parents, and then I don't remember anything. <laughs> There is a lot of congratulations coming up. I am so happy. <laughs> Moment to cherish for a long yes. time. Now let's talk about your preparation journey. You are a B Tech uh, civil Seven. engineer from Kusat, right? So you passed out in 2019, and immediately you started your preparation, right? Yes. So when did you actually uh, decide that I want to write civil service examination? What was the spark, or when did you uh, feel that yes, I should go for UPSC? So I had this uh, childhood dream of becoming a collector. uh because my mother sister elder sister actually told me initially that by seeing an article on newspaper that uh, you should become a collector so from that day onwards whenever anybody ask i would say i want to become a collector i don't know what what that position is anything i am not aware of it but then later when i joined college there was a felicitation happening for a upsc uh, um a person who cleared the examination so i was thinking okay maybe after 4 years i can come back like this and uh, soon after i passed out of college i uh, gave one attempt and i thought of giving one whole prepared fully prepared uh, one more attempt but i could not clear that prelims and uh, soon after that prelims uh, within 2 3 days i decided okay i will give one more one last attempt and this would be the best and i would enjoy and give it my best and finally i cracked it so in the third so dreams do become reality and yes. whatever you dreamt of that felicitation and clearing <laughs> everything is today now a reality so you have given three attempts for upsc yes, yes. first attempt and second attempt first attempt you did not seriously give second mm -hmm. was your serious attempt yes. you failed prelims yes uh, and then in the third attempt you cleared prelims mains and interview in one go so when you failed that prelims especially the second prelims which you seriously prepared How did you face that failure? Uh, did you feel dejected? Did you feel that no, I should quit UPSC? What was your thought process, and how did you uh, overcome that first failure? Actually, uh, it is not the prelims uh, results that uh, de uh, that made me feel dejected. It was in the exam hall in the prelims itself that I thought, okay, I have failed because I was not able to mark many of the answers just because I lacked courage. i lacked confidence and belief in my preparation at that point in the exam hall so i understood what my problem was in, from the exam hall itself and later when i came back home i cried i cried a lot because i i understood and also i understood that i made a lot of mistakes but at the same time one full year of preparation is all in waters and soon after it uh, within two days i decided okay i will give one more attempt and i will rectify all my mistakes not to prove myself to anybody but just for self satisfaction and to uh, feel that uh, confidence by giving one full uh, prepared attempts once more 
right so you gave up in the exam hall itself yes. which is I, i think which is the importance of staying composed in that two hours of prelims especially yes uh, now um, like um, uh, no when we come to preparation how many hours and all did you study see there is a myth you uh, know that where people say i have studied 14 16 hours which i practically feel is impossible to do so when you prepare for one to two years continuously how long did you prepare and did you have a time table how did you go with ahead with the preparation in general so soon after uh, tw- 20 uh, 20 prelims i bought a small notebook and its name was roadmap to prelims 2022 and uh, i wrote from day 1 I wrote whatever things I would be achieving in a day. Okay. So it would be uh, uh, the first ritual I would do every morning. Okay. I will write down uh, whatever I'll be studying mm. and also different breaks for uh, my hobbies, playing with my sister's child. Everything was recorded there. Okay. And uh, eventually at the night uh, when I go back to sleep, I used to tick whichever I did. And okay. If it was uh, if I was able to do everything, I would be happy and that confidence Okay. Okay. It was a okay. uh, a slow process, a step by step process, and over over days, I remember uh, prelims uh, happened, and uh, it was the day one thirty five in my book. Okay. And that confidence came over over day over months. Okay. So when I look back that book, I was I was very sure I was confident about whatever I had done. Okay. So that confidence reflected in the exam hall. So uh, it it started after the first the prelims failure. Yes. So and even yeah. after uh, when i went to the exam hall only goal in my mind was to come back with a smile from okay. the exam hall and okay. that happened great great to uh, you know hear that story of change and motivation which i ca- i think can inspire a lot of people planning and how you achieve i think one day at a time yes mm, yes now let's come to the exam process uh, step by step we will st- start with prelims now first prelims you failed Uh, first uh, you know serious prelims yes. and then you bounce back especially 2021 prelims was one of the toughest prelims in the last few years and now prelims is kind of becoming very uh, uncertain yeah very uncertain they are asking random questions even if you study really hard 20 to 25 questions you can solve in the exam hall so and you are somebody who gave up in the first attempt even after you are prepared so what is your advice to the aspirants who are going to take the upcoming prelims like how should you face that prelims first of all i think we should analyze what upsc is demanding so previous year question would be the first thing that everybody should look after the syllabus of the pre- uh, prelims and uh, in my case i had solved at least 60 to 65 uh, mock tests and uh, i also had a track record of it i used to keep a small notebook in which apart from the omr sheet bubbling i used to write 1 to 100 and the name of the test and i used to mark in it whichever question i i um, attempted with knowledge basis or by using elimination technique so i had small short uh, short uh, short keys for it like k for knowledge e for elimination i would write from 1 to 100 and i used to analyze it so if uh, i made more mistakes in the knowledge part i would go back and revise uh, the basic books the ncrts or uh, for polity b lakshmikant and if it is the elimination technique that i have made more errors i would go back and revise those mistakes by looking at the questions not the answer key but looking at the questions and find out ways in which i would be able to come arrive at the answer mm. so this technique was practiced like for each test i would i have done more than 2 3 revisions okay. so that is one thing i uh, i applied for this prelims mm. so again come coming to the exam hall Uh, how did you answer this uncertain questions like uh, you know elimination so yes. you just followed whatever you did in the mock test or was the actual prelims a different ball game so before going for the prelims the, the last one week i sticked on to solving the previous year questions only from 2015 to 2020 each day i would sit as if i am in the exam hall and i would honestly solve it like if will i be able to answer this question in the exam hall even though i knew the answer before we all come across these pre- pre- previous year yes, questions yes, in yes. between uh, our preparation but i would sit with myself and honestly solve it and um, i understood that when i do more than 80 to 85 uh, questions i got more negatives okay so i came arrived at that conclusion and for this prelims i had attempted only 77 questions 
Okay. Okay. So I think that should be done by each aspirant themselves because uh, each one will have their own interpretation of the question in the exam hall. Okay. So rather than going by any analysis by uh, any YouTube videos or any any solved uh, pre IQs, I would say that one should sit with the hundred questions of each year and analyze and find out the different uh, tricks and tips by themselves. Apart from the usual way, like the extreme questions and yes. uh, not correct things and all. So you solved a lot of mock tests and yes. previous UPSC questions also were really helpful. Now coming to the basic preparation like NCRTs, uh, Lakshmi Khan, Spectrum and all, uh, generally especially the aspirants who have just begun the preparation, their doubts will be whether should I make notes for NCRT, should I make notes for Lakshmi Khan. So how did you go about it? Did you make notes or uh, you just read it and directly from the books? I made notes only for uh, the history NCRTs class 6, 7 and 8 and uh, for geography I had already some notes from uh, the co coaching institutes that I attended and for polity I did not make any notes, I refer to Lakshmi Kant itself. So it, depend upon, it also depended upon how much I know that subject. So as we know ancient history and uh, questions from it are becoming more uncertain. So rather than making notes from the textbooks, I had made small, small uh, key, uh, small notes from uh, different answer keys that I came across in a very small book, a hundred page notebook for history and I used to revise it only. And in the case of geography, uh, I think I just read the NCRTs and I went on reading it when I made any mistake uh, after uh, solving a few uh, tests, a mock tests, sectional tests for each subject. All right. like so Certain subjects you made small notes and certain subjects you directly read, uh, read the, the books or NCRTs, right. Now coming to the current affairs for prelims, uh, you know, basically there are two sources which aspirants follow, one is the newspaper, one is the monthly magazines, current affairs magazines. So how did you prepare current affairs for prelims? I read the um, Hindu newspaper every day and uh, I used to screenshot a few um, articles which I found helpful not just for prelims but also for mains in future so i i had these small folders in my phone in the camera uh, folder for each gs1 gs2 gs3 gs4 okay. like that okay so uh, i had uh, sorted it out and before prelims uh, i think i i had not given much importance to different current affairs materials i read these uh, small screenshots and also i solved a lot of current affair based mock tests all right and uh, for any test that I solved, I made sure that I revised it more than three times. All right. So, so I've done that basically, one. newspapers and uh, current affairs tests is what you relate for current affairs yes. preparation. The right. daily tests that were available on different platforms, right, I used right. to read it, and if possible, uh, the I used to download the monthly uh, compilation of it. Tests. Yeah. Oh, questions. And for that also, I had this record. Mm -hmm. uh, one, two, how many questions are there, whatever I made errors, mm. that revision would be going on, not the entire thing. Oh, right, all right. Now, between your first prelims and second prelims, I mean, first major prelims and second prelims, you told that one thing you did was uh, solving questions and then marking it as theoretical or elimination. Mm. Apart from that, did you make any major changes in your preparation strategy, which worked in the second prelims, which you could clear? Any changes in the preparation strategy for prelims? Uh, I think uh, apart from knowledge, I worked a lot on coexisting with the pressure at the exam hall. So uh, luckily we had uh, the prelims got extended due to the lockdown uh, and for that matter I started doing tests in the exam pressure, pressure like conditions. So we know that in the exam hall we enter at 9 o'clock and the exam starts at 9.30. So that half hour is an hour of uncertainty anything can come to our mind sometimes we will be very confident but by any chance if we think that we will not be able to do well that might reflect in our performance so i practiced like your first prelims yes so i practiced uh, to calm down my mind for a uh, half an hour and this this was also a process i did it for one month so i would sit uh, every day morning at, uh, at nine o'clock i would sit in my room next to my table and till 9.30 I would just stay there and at uh, 9.30 I would take the OMR sheet and I'll solve it, at 11.30 I'll stop it. No matter what happens, I'll just stop it. And even the study patterns were like that. For two hours, 
I used to study for two hours, two hours, and I'll okay. take a small gap. Okay. So whenever the two hours is over, I'll just abruptly stop it okay. because in the exam hall they're yes. going to snatch our paper. Yes, yes. So I was getting used to that action reaction. Mm, right, right. So uh, again, very important that calm, calmness and composition, the two hours of like, especially I feel prelims. Yes. Very important. Now let's discuss about mains and mains preparation. So how did you go about uh, the GS preparations again? We know there are basic materials which we will read for all the subjects. Apart from that, did you make any special notes and how did you deal with all the GS papers? So initially, I just read all the syllabus. Uh, before the prelims only, I had an idea about the different GS syllabus. Mm. And I had written a lot of uh, answers before delving into the uh, mock test mode of prelims preparation. So um, apart from that, I also I also wrote a lot of pre previous year questions All right. uh, before prelims, and um, after clearing prelims, I started making notes word by word as per the syllabus mm. for all the GS4 paper, GS1, mm. 2, 3, 4 papers mm. and for reference I also used the toppers notes which were available okay. and uh, this note making was also a continuous process I would say because GS1, GS2, 3, 4 happens in 2 days Yes. but it is a preparation of 2-3 months. Yes. We have to reflect everything in that 3 Th hours. Yes. So I used to make concise notes or I used to make my notes conciser mm. by uh, pre uh, initially it was around uh, 100 pages but finally I would I was able to reduce it to one mains booklet for All GS1 right. and GS2. Okay. So that I can prepare it, in, uh, just go through it before uh, entering the exam hall. Right. Especially for GS2 and GS4 I did this. GS2 so, and okay. So that in the lunch break and I can just go through the entire syllabus in mm. one go in less than an hour, in a less than 30 minutes. So mainly your reference was um, answer questions, answer papers and then current affairs also included in the same notes. Yes, current affairs, apart from the static, uh, uh, by looking at the syllabus, I included the current affairs in uh, just next to it only, mm. so that I can relate it to the static portion. So even though the current affair uh, part was not much emphasized on, I could relate it to the static because I just wrote it next to it. Right. So you had syllabus wise notes for uh, all the papers. You made syllabus wise notes. So that I only I can read it yes, out. Yes, I, I get uh, it. All that's right. That's right. All right. All right. <laughs> so in the mains preparation, you told in the notes you made small current affairs notes related to the static. Apart from that, you did not prepare current affairs for mains or how did you go ahead with it? Was it newspapers or again, uh, did you follow any monthly magazines? How did you go ahead with the current affairs for mains? For mains, I strictly did not follow any current affair magazine. I stick to the newspapers. I read the newspapers very elaborately and as I mentioned earlier, I had these screenshots and I would read it in the morning, the paper I would read it in the morning and then before going to sleep, I would read it again, those screenshots. Okay. So and also I tried to use these points uh, in the answer writing and I had an answer writing group. Mm. So I would uh, tell them, mm. discuss with them and also give them uh, my knowledge, they would share. Mm. Like that, it was a collective uh, all right, growth. Alright, all right, great. Now in the mains, one of the most important thing is answer writing. Whatever knowledge you have, it should reflect in the uh, answer paper, right? So that answer writing is very important. So when did you actually start this answer writing process? Like uh, did you start it before the prelims or after the prelims or after the first prelims? When did you start this process uh, of answer writing? I uh, initially started answer writing before uh, the 2020 prelims. All right. Uh, but then I started it regularly. I started doing it religiously after uh, the 2020 prelims mm. uh, before getting into the complete prelims mode of 2020. All right. And uh, after that, um, after get, uh, the results were out, I joined uh, the Shankar mainstorming series and I wrote uh, the first test. I was not able to complete the paper and uh, it was not the way it should be. But I just tried, I just wanted to know how I, how I am in the competition. And then I got uh, the feedbacks, both written line by line correction as well as the offline feedback from uh, the Trivandrum branch. And I think it helped me a lot. Uh, especially there were uh, test series especially in GS3 I remember I cried in middle and I just ran away I couldn't complete but um, one thing I maintained is that integrity towards writing these uh, test series I wrote it very honestly uh, I used to give it in three hour only I never took at least one minute extra and I still remember uh, for an essay paper the question paper was given two days before 
but when they gave it to me i could see it and i just closed my eyes and slid it in so that i don't see the topics okay, okay. if i if it if i see it it's like uh, it's not the way it should be yes so like that i had maintained complete honesty and integrity while giving this main test series and of course shankar has helped me a lot in improving uh, by correcting me and guiding me It really we are also happy that we could help you out in this process now you are a shankar uh, mainstorming student so how important it, it is to join a test series and especially peer group i think more than classes the feedbacks which you get how it has shaped your answers you have already told first answer was first paper you were not doing good so the importance of a test series writing answers uh, how will you put it out so joining any test series would be a one option which will help you to uh, give a very structured preparation for mains especially when uh, the sectional test while writing the sectional test all the gs uh, syllabus would be covered very holistically and uh, joining shankars i could uh, actually cover it in a very systematic manner by dividing both all the four papers into two sections and uh, learning them and of course the feedback became very crucial because the corrections the uh, the ones that were provided online was very much constructive criticism so that there was no kind of any kind of biases and it was to the mark this is it was very honest so i could just take it and reproduce it the next time at the same time the offline feedbacks were very much encouraging and it helped me to improve my confidence and self belief really again great and happy to hear the good words let's come to the optional subject uh, mains uh, before going to the optional one more question regarding gs like two papers uh, aspirants uh, does not have a, a concrete source to prepare on or they are doubtful how to prepare as essay paper and ethics paper uh, like there is no um, concrete books for you to read yes. ethics we have books but still case studies how to approach how did you go with this uh, essay paper and ethics paper for gs so if we look at the essay papers of upsc it has turned to be more philosophical so i decided to give uh, to write 10 essays beforehand before going to the real mains examination of essay i would write 10 essays that was in, that was my target and uh, i wrote it i wrote the shankars on all india uh, free mock test that was available for essay and i got feedbacks and uh, also i discussed with my friends that uh, the peer group we used to brainstorm a lot of essay topics at the night uh, after our preparation that also helped me a lot and for ethics also we used to write case studies every day and discuss uh, the different outcomes and the different keywords that can be used in uh, the answers so there is no one strict uh, book or any uh, concrete structure to follow uh, for essay and ethics it is the way how we interpret it is more about putting ourselves into it especially essays about our creative perspectives so i think we one should spend time with oneself and analyze and guidance would be helpful to uh, find out our strength and weakness in both these papers all right now let's move to the optionals you are basically a civil engineer but chose psir as your optional why psir what was the thought process behind the decision actually this was a question asked for me in the real UPSC interview you okay, face okay. interview also uh, i didn't choose civil engineering because it is not i am not very confident in taking up it as my optional especially there was a gap of 2 3 years mm. and uh, it was not feasible for me especially there is no not much peer group also mm. in the hometown and why psir uh, because i looked at the syllabus of psir and i found that there is a lot of overlap with all gs subjects as well as sa okay. so i found that it would be helpful for me in other preparation the gs papers also so that is the reason and also i had an interest in international relations and mm -hmm. as i aspire also to Become be a, a part of either ias or ifs so that is also a reason right now you are somebody who cleared mains in the first uh, go itself so uh, somewhere things would have worked for you obviously you told how you prepared gs how you took test series and all so what did what do you feel worked in psir you have almost uh, 250 plus score in psir right so what worked for you in psir in the first attempt itself you got a good score so what all you did or rather the do's and don'ts of psir what do you feel so for psir i again i made notes in uh, as per the syllabus the different keywords i did not miss any keyword and uh, rather than stressing on making many notes 
what I did was writing more answers, especially after clearing prelims. There is not much time to dedicate for every papers. We have to be very judiciously allocating time for all papers. So for optional, I had uh, used this style of writing answers more and learning uh, the different topics in the syllabus. That was the method I used. And I also used to uh, revise a lot of model answers that was given by the different mentors. So like that and finally, even for optional paper, I had these small notes, which was just uh, 20 to 30 papers, uh, only that much, and I used to revise it. So, if it was one topic and underneath, I had the different thinkers, and right. uh, I also had uh, different uh, conclusions and introductions prepared okay. for different topics. Like right. that, I said. So, that is how it worked for PSIR. Yes. Now, coming to the interview, your first interview and you kind of hit the ball out of park in the first in interview itself, I think 185 yes. is a really good score. So, how was the interview experience? Which board did you get and how did it how did it go? Was it like the mock experiences you had or was it a different experiences, experience in the interview board? I think the real UPC interview is an uh, extremely different experience unlike the mocks. And for me, I would say there was a uh, a lot of luck also involved in it because most of the questions asked in my real interview was strictly restricted to my DAF only. It was a, a lot of questions came from my graduation background, my hometown, my home state and uh, uh, infrastructure and other which was related to my DAF only. So uh, and also I have to say that it is a very, uh, it is a very good experience to cherish for a lifetime. I got a Satyavadi ma'am's board. And uh, it, I also had some health issues due to the heat wave. So uh, I, I think it did not affect me looking at the score. I'm very happy. And that's... Uh, any questions you remember? Interesting questions, any light moments with the board uh, uh, which you shared? Can you share some experience of that? Not any kind of interesting questions were asked. Mm. But I think uh, one uh, question related to my hobby was asked. Like, uh, how can you differentiate between uh, Hindustani music and Carnatic music? How can a layman differentiate by seeing a concert? So I gave the answer like looking at the language uh, that uh, the person is singing and the different accompaniments and also the style of singing. Uh, so that was the only thing was which was out of the box rather than the other uh, questions. Right. So you had more daft related questions. So any, any questions you can share from that your DAF which they asked, you remember? Yes, uh, they asked me, I had not, uh, I, I had uh, chosen civil engineering as uh, my graduation subject. So why uh, civil engineering as my graduation subject was her question. Okay. So that was very personal. Uh, my sister wanted to be a civil engineer, but she couldn't. So uh, from that uh, time onwards, I'm hearing about civil engineering and this planning and construction and all. So, uh, based on that, many questions were asked. Would, have I visited Taj Mahal? What is the foundation of Taj Mahal? Such interesting okay. questions were there. Right. But I could not answer it, so I said I don't know. <laughs> okay, all right. Now, we'll do uh, something slightly uh, no, interesting. Uh, we'll do a rapid fire kind of thing. Uh, I'll ask you some random questions. Um, answer it very honestly. Uh, you know, don't think much. You can answer it quickly also. Most of them are, them are yes, no questions. You can yeah. answer yes, no also. The subject you like the most in the preparation? Preparation. I think uh, international relations. The subject you hated the most? <laughs> Economics. <laughs> An officer who inspired you? There is not one officer. Any, any, any names uh, which comes to your mind? <laughs> I can't recollect now. Uh, it's okay. So, at least once in the preparation, I have felt that UPSC was not the right decision. Yes or no? No, I have never felt so. Always you were... I, I trusted the institution yes. and the process. At least once have I thought about changing my optional? No. PSIR, we were yes. keen on it. I stayed away from social media to avoid friends and their status. Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Not using social media. No. All right. Not even WhatsApp at some points of time. Very great. One of the inspirations for writing the exam was the fame after the results. One of the inspirations. Uh, not, I am not a, such, uh, I don't like much attention, I would say. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> so, it is very overwhelming for me to see this kind of attention. After so, you never day. dreamt of that day when newspaper uh, people are at your home, media at your home, you never dreamt of that day? Not, not really. <laughs> Great. I have skipped NCRTs. No. 
just read all NCRTs. Not all, but the ones which I found, I must read. Hmm. I have skipped newspapers. No. Great. I have created hobbies recently to add to my DAF. Uh, yes <laughs> and no, because uh, I recently got interested in solving Rubik's Cube during okay. the lockdown. So, that was a recent hobby. Okay. Music was there with me since my childhood. Great. Uh, at least one person have told me that you should not try for UPSC. Many people have tried to discourage me by saying that why don't you try other exams also. I think only that but I, I never uh, had any kind of external influence did not affect me much. I was very uh, keen on writing this. Alright, great, uh, uh, totally upfront also. <laughs> Thank you so much. Now you told about, you know, every aspirant has certain subjects which they like, which you told international relations and certain subjects which we more than hate, which we feel difficult, right, economics for you. How did you deal with those subjects which you were, which were difficult for you? Like how did you overcome that, uh, you know, difficulty of that subject, like economics and all? Uh, GS3 was a paper I found which very tough, which I found very tough. So for economics, I, uh, I read the basics well once more and uh, I wrote more answers with my friends so that I get more uh, amount of knowledge not by investing much time in it. So that is one thing and it improved my confidence a lot. Not that I have much knowledge but I know how to deal with different questions when it comes. I know how I can fill the pages. That right. So really deal with what UPSC wants from yes. you from that subject, right. See UPSC preparation is a long journey. You have also been preparing for the last three years and the result is uncertain till the moment it comes. You, we are maybe all of you were preparing for the next prelims till the moment probably the results came. How do you deal with stress in the process? Like uh, did you follow, you, you told in between that you found time for your hobby, playing with your yes. sister's kid and all. So is it really possible to find time for your, ho for your hobbies? Did you, uh, you know, follow all your hobbies during this uh, three, four years? How did you deal with stress in the entire process? Actually, stress management was one big thing that I uh, did not give much importance in my first serious attempt and that backfired. So I had decided that even when I am preparing honestly and focused, I would enjoy this process and we cannot enjoy without by keeping away our favourite things. So I embraced everything, my strength and weakness. I studied, I played, I played badminton with my brother, I used to sing, I used to play with my sister's child, everything happened and there is always time, we just have to utilize it very judiciously. So this examination is not trying to bring about great, uh, grad, uh, big um, people who are going to, you know, be experts in anything, but we want good people who are going to be serving hmm. the society. So that personality must reflect in our the entire process of preparation. And I think it requires one's own personality should be there in uh, while preparing also. So you could manage your uh, leisurely activities along with preparation and that helped you in managing the stress yes. to some extent, right? Looking back, like uh, uh, if you are seeing a young uh, Niranjana, like just about to start the preparation, what miss, what advice will you give her right now? One, you have now cleared the exam, now you are seeing a young Niranjana, it is just about to start, what advice will you give her right now? Is is it the same person? Yeah, you you only, you are there, uh, you know, the just your B.Tech is over and you are about to start the preparation. Now today you are meeting her, what will you tell her? I would tell her to uh, find out things by herself, uh, not being, not try to imitate anybody and find out uh, what is good for her, what the strengths are, face failures and face success by accepting both equally and uh, rise from the ashes and achieve the goal. Great, great, great advice you can give and uh, if you look back retrospectively, three things which you would have done differently now. like. No, uh, three thing, three mistakes you would have corrected uh, in your preparation journey. What all you feel you could have done better, or you could have done differently when in, in your preparation. I think I I did not have a peer group for prelims, hmm. so that that was uh, actually affecting me a lot because without a peer group, appearing for prelims is a little more. There is a lot more pressure because 
now i see that many of my friends are uh, studying and discussing together now okay. i realize how much it is beneficial mm -hmm. so i think that is one thing that i lacked or okay. i wished it was there during my preparation okay anything else uh anything else um i think one you already told like uh, that two hours of prelims yes. that how to face the exam uh, was you learned in the after the first prelims yes. you gave up in the prelims itself any anything else you would anything else i i especially for mains because you are somebody who cleared the mains in the first attempt so anything regarding mains you want to tell always uh, try to study according to the demand of the examination so never divert yourself so when it is prelims it is about solving mcqs so the answers are already there we just mm. have to find out the right answer mm. but when it comes to mains it is about expressing one's knowledge by writing so give more importance to writing rather than garnering more knowledge mm. and when it comes to interview it is about presenting oneself so knowledge apart from knowledge our demeanors our qualities who the person we are should be reflected so these uh, things must be kept in mind before uh, delving much into the preparation of all the stages great now see there are aspirants who fail in this exam at multiple stages uh, the failure rate is way way more than the success ratio of this process you also have failed prelims in different phases what will you tell to those aspirants who fail this exam multiple times now you have cleared it now what will you give even your friends who have appeared for interview would have failed or mains also would have failed what would what would you advise to those aspirants who are facing failures and kind of feeling dejected and you know feeling we should quit and all what you what would you tell them first of all i would say that uh, giving upsc requires a lot of time and patience and uh, we also need a lot of support and luckily i had all the three and uh, giving more than three attempts should be done only with a plan b i am a person who had already decided before writing this prelims that i would stop the cycle for now and take a break so uh, mental health is very very important apart from physical health so i think we should always talk to our friends whenever we feel dejected to the people whom we uh, hold together for our all our success and failures and figure out and get uh, some kind of uh, relief by sharing our uh, uh, different worries i had one of my friends uh, one of my classmates i would like to mention her name darshana uh, she was a person who does not know anything about upsc but uh, it is just that she didn't write the exam all other kinds of anxieties and uh, uh, all excitement she had more than me so i was i am very thankful to her and i hope you all have such kind of people with you even if it is not if if it is not like that uh, you should always believe in yourself and make sure that the fire in you does not die and the purpose for clearing this exam is always very clear in your mind and definitely with hard work you can achieve this great great thoughts now to those aspirants who are just about to start the preparation or they are in the first year of preparation you would have also gone through that uh, they are attending the classes now and they feel lot of uh, they are just beginners so they feel lack of time they have to study so much no time to read newspapers no time to read ncrts so what would you tell to those aspirants who are just beginning the preparation so you clearing upsc or giving upsc examination is not an overnight process it is a process which takes a lot of time uh, and one needs to have a lot of patience we see that we have a lot of information available about toppers and different answer copies and uh, many many materials are flooded so there is always a tendency to know more uh, to look uh, through everything so we should restrict ourselves and uh, find out everything not if not possible everything cannot be found out by ourselves we need uh, guidance for especially for answer writing and different stages it is required but apart from that we should have a perspective about this examination it should not be another person's perspective that is very much important we even if you are starting to prepare from today make sure that you know the demand of this examination and you have read the syllabus thoroughly and go through the previous year questions day by day and uh, you will you will get into the track of preparation again once again a great thought advice 
Now, the day when we start preparing for the exam, we would obviously dream about becoming an officer, bureaucrat one day, and for you, probably a diplomat. So, have you ever thought about what all you want to do as a diplomat once you are going to get through the training process and all? Like, uh, this is something I would like to do as a diplomat. Have that thought ever gone through your mind? Actually, I have not thought about it. Okay. I currently am excited about going for the FC. F training. So, let future uh, come as it comes and I am sure that whatever position you are given, you will do a really great job. Now, Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, most <laughs> welcome. So much. Now, as I told, Shangarai's Academy is really happy to be a part of your success journey and we would be happy to hear your experiences with Shangarai's Academy. Uh, I remember coming for the main test series at uh, Shankar's Devandam branch. I had no idea, I had no friends there. So initially I would just write, uh, I, I would just write the um, test series and go and come back for the fe feedback and uh, after two, three tests I, I came to know about Lena ma'am and she was always there with a smiling face and uh, she was always ready to help me in all possible ways, all aspirants. So I would say, I would give uh, a lot of um, uh, a lot of gratitude for her and the entire team at Shankar's for making me a part of their family and I am truly indebted to all uh, Arjun sir and Gautam sir and everybody Asif sir for helping me a lot for guiding me thank you so much oh, pleasure, pleasure is always ours now I know that one of your hobbies is music and you are a great singer so let's end the, end the whole session with a small song of yours I'm not a great singer. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's listen and see. Is a mold se jaate hai. Is a mold se jaate hai. Kuch sust qadam raste. Kuch tez qadam rahe. पत्थर की हवेली को शीशे के घरों धो में के नशे मन तक इस मोड़ से जाते हैं Wow, really beautiful. You are like, you know, you were humble when you said you don't sing well. Really beautiful. So, all the very best, Niranjana. I am sure that as I said, you are going to do a great job on the field. We are all eagerly waiting to see you on action on ground. So, once again, hearty congratulations and all the very best for future. Thank, Thank you so, you so much. much. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you.